Hello, everybody. Welcome to the Destroy to Shin podcast. My name is Elijah Stacy. I'm the founder of the nonprofit organization Destroy to Shin and the host of the Destroy to Shin podcast. Today, we have with us uh, a friend of mine who I met early on uh, when I first started Destroy to Shin, uh, Jared, and I'm excited to have him on. So, Jared, it's great to have you on. Uh, why don't you just tell us about your age and where you're located? Okay, so I am 20 years old and I am in uh, Texas. Texas. Okay, cool, cool, cool. It's awesome, man. I'm, I really, really like uh, Texas from what I hear about. I've never been, but I'm interested in one day actually living there. I think Texas is really uh, cool. Um, do you like it out there? Yeah, yeah, I do. I, I like living here in Texas. Yeah. It's, what part of uh, what part of Texas are you from? Um, so I am in the Coastal Bend area. Where, where is that at? Like, give, like, how far would that be from, I don't know, like the big major cities? So uh, San Antonio, it's about uh, two and a half hours away. Okay. All right. That's cool. Do you ever, do you ever go to visit San Diego then once in a while or? Uh, once in a while. Um, so. All right. For sure. That's cool. That's cool. Um, all right. Um, so I want to, I want to get to introduce you to the audience, have them really get to know you. So uh, let's learn more about you. What do you like to do, you know, um, for fun or like what's something that's like a hobby? So um, my biggest hobby is like, uh, is building Legos. Um, I would say that's my favorite thing to do. Mm, okay. You know, that's, that's interesting you say that. I, I, I keep hearing over and over again when I do these interviews that people with addition they have a creative outlet that they do um and i think that building legos is, is definitely a creative outlet um actually I have a another friend brett who was on the destruction podcast and he he builds all kinds of things with lego so um that's really cool um would you consider yourself a creative person then i i think so um i have i do a few other things um i enjoy like uh, painting stuff. So I think, yeah, I do. Okay. Painting stuff. What do you like to paint? So I've kind of taken up like going and getting like rocks and just painting, painting those up. Okay. So just kind of doing designs with those, you know, I, I actually seen that, like I went on a, you know, a walk, uh, if you call that a stroll, um, with, uh, some friends of mine and anyways like you know just around the city you know found this these rocks these people were just placing rocks around our city and like they put like quotes on them or like cool little designs or whatever and i thought oh that's pretty cool um they also put their website on and they were selling rocks i was like wow that's a, a, a true entrepreneur right there um that's cool do you have any um you know favorite foods music you know the basics what, what do we like um so I don't really have a favorite genre of music. I pretty much listen to anything really. Um, so, I mean, I don't really have a favorite genre. I guess my, most of my music on my phone is maybe like 80s music. Um, so I uh, enjoy listening to that, that stuff. Um, 80s music, yep. Any, any favorite artist? um not really no not really okay okay that's cool um fair food um i guess you could say um a hamburger is probably my go-to meal um so all right that's cool a hamburger um how about desserts probably chocolate mousse Chocolate mousse. Okay. Yes. Right. That's, right. that's good. Sounds like that's a very specific. You already know. <laughs> I like that. <clears throat> TV shows, books, your TV guy, book guy. Movie. Yeah, I think, I think TV has been, that's since the pandemic, that's been my, that's pretty much all I've been doing is just watching TV. So it's kind of, I, I've kind of got to a point where it's like there's nothing really to watch anymore. So, mm. you got like Netflix or Hulu or any of you know any of those, and like just binge watch. Is that what you're doing or what? 
Yeah, pretty much. Yeah. Nice. What uh, what have you been watching? Like, what's I mean, what what's something that you really enjoy? Um, right now I've been watching ER. So I mean, um, it's an older show. Um, but I I've I've always like liked watching medical shows, so it's mm. kind of it's, it's good. Is that an interest to you, like the medical field and stuff like that? Yes, it is. Uh, can you tell us? Can you tell us more about that? Maybe why that is? Is that because you know you're you have the shin? Is it because, or do you think it's just who you are? Like, why why do you think that you're interested in that? I think it's just who I am. Um, I really think um, if I didn't have the shin, that's where I would have gone. Is into the medical field. Um, I think my biggest thing I wanted to do, um, like uh, do brain surgery and stuff like that. If that was like a big thing for me, I want, that's something I'd always thought about. Um, so, brain surgery, yeah, that's very um, interesting. And I mean, just to think that doctors can operate on your brain—I mean, you have to be very precise. You cannot mess up. It's, you know, that's that's a uh, super interesting. What? Why do you? Why do you think though that you're interested in it, or what? is it about it that interests you? I'm always fascinated with people's curiosities and interests. So I think, I think maybe, you know, just to kind of see all the, you know, I think for me, it's like interesting that just one um, thing in your body controls, like everything you do, you know, um, I think that's pretty much why I wanted, I'm interested in that. Um, it's just like one thing kind of tells you what you, what you can, what you need to do, you know. Mm, mm. Saying, um, so, you, well, you, that that's the brain that you're referring to, correct? Yes. So, but like, I'm saying in general, like the medical field as a whole, or is it just like, or or are you saying basically like, you know, just the fact that the body is so complicated and works so well that's what's so interesting to me. And that's why I'm interested in the medical field. Is that kind of what you're getting at? Yes. Yeah. I think it's just like that. Yeah. That's, that's the same with me. It's like, I just think the body's just like really interesting. It's like, it's got so many things working at once to control it. So it's just like, I guess that just, it's just interesting, you know, to think about. Yeah, no, I, I totally agree with you. I think um, it is super fascinating and you know, I, I really like looking at the cells and stuff like that. And the fact that you have your DNA and, you know, your DNA tells your whole body what to do. And, and if there's a, one spelling error, just one thing, it can cause a person to not walk, for example, um, AKA to shin, right. Um, where it has a spelling error or within the, uh, the gene that encodes for dystrophin, um, so yeah, no, I think the human body is fascinating. I definitely share that interest with you. I'm very interested in the medical field and, and you know, developing uh, medical technologies that can help people's lives. Um, so that's really, really cool. Do you have any role models in that you look up to? Maybe any doctors or, you know, people? I, I, I'm always interested in this as well, that who are people's role models in life? Who do they look up to? Who do they want to be like? It's hard to say. I don't really think I have a specific person I look up to. Um, it's kind of, I don't know, that's, that's just, that's a hard question for me. I've never actually kind of picked somebody that like I look up to, you know. Mm, okay, okay. Um, what would you say that you're you know, your goals are in life, then is there anything that you want to accomplish or do or experience? I think I want to, my, my biggest thing is maybe traveling before it gets like really hard to, to do, because unfortunately there's with, with Duchenne, there's no way to really get on a plane and be comfortable. Yeah. I've been thinking about that a lot lately. You know, I actually have a, um, the previous podcast, um, I think that we have uploaded uh, with Colin. He actually travels a lot, um, and and he talks about that. 
I don't know if I necessarily say it's comfortable, but it is doable. Um, and I think that there's certain ways that we can go about doing it. Um, have you ever traveled by plane before? Yes, I have. Tell, tell us about your experience with that. What, what's that like? So, you know, I think it's the hard part about it is probably like when I have to get up from the seat to go um, use the bathroom, you know, it's it's a struggle to get up, um, you know, and it's it for me, it's like one of those things It's like I have to look around and make sure nobody's staring at me getting up, you know. Um, so it's like it's always embarrassing to, to get up during the flight to go use the bathroom. Um, so I think that's just my biggest thing. You know, if I could, if I had my chair, maybe, you know, I would be able to get up and the seat wouldn't be as low. Um, mm -hmm. what, um, so what, what, how does that make you feel then? Uh, you know, you're talking about people staring or, or looking, what, what is that like? For me, it's, it's really, it, it makes me really annoyed because it's like they don't they don't want to like initiate a conversation or kind of be like hey what's your name you know and get to like kind of know you they just stare at you and kind of trying to figure out what is wrong with this with this person you know and it's like they don't it feels like I'm not they're not treating me like a regular person would be treated you know so it in a way it kind of annoys me a little bit because it's like they don't want to come initiate or start a conversation they just they're just trying to assume in their own mind what's wrong um so mm, i see what you're saying yeah no I, I i see what you're saying for sure um yeah that is uh definitely annoying but i definitely think that you know simply just um something that we can work on that what we can control is just simply not care. Just, you know what, if you're going to not be like that, you know, I, I have empathy though, from their point of view, you know, I think that, you know what, um, I would, I, I, let's be honest. It's, uh, it's abnormal to be in a wheelchair or whatever. It's not, it's not the normal. Right. And so from their point of view, I could see, okay, they just have a curiosity. Humans are curious. Um, so then I take it upon myself to start the conversation with them and then go from there. And you can change a lot of minds by doing that. Um, and really help yourself um, because people are, um, I think for the most part, you know, they're nice and, and want to get along and whatever. So um, that's just kind of my, my take on that, but um, okay. So you want to travel anywhere that you want to travel in particular? Mm -hmm. Just wherever, you know, um, I think, you know, just to be able to see the rest of the world is just a, um, see different cultures and just how you know how different they are compared to like our culture you know um I think that's my really really that's my main goal with it you know is just to be able to go to different places and experience different cultures mm, okay okay I think that's really cool I, I also want to do the same I think that seeing the whole world and different cultures it's so um interesting and cool to you know meet new people and and taste new foods and uh different temperatures and all kinds of things you know just the whole world and nature and, and humans are uh so beautiful so beautiful right that's how i'd explain it um is there anything that you're really passionate about so i'm really passionate about i would say religion um, it's a big, it's a big part of my life. Um, uh, before the pandemic, I was really involved, like in my church. Um, I was doing a lot of volunteering. Um, so I kind of miss that, um, aspect of it, but, um, right now I'm working on a, um, on my, uh, theology degree. So, um, I should be done in about a year with that. Um, and I hope to um, probably go into like pastoral counseling. Um, so. Very cool. Very cool. I think that's really cool. Um, where are you studying at? So I'm studying um, at Stark uh, College. It's a university here in uh, Texas. Uh, so it's a small, small college. 
Mm, that's cool. Yeah, you know, you're getting your uh, degree. And um, so that is that what you want to do for a career then? Is, yes. Uh, you said pastoral counseling, correct? Yes. yes. Cool, cool, cool. I think that's really cool. Um, that's awesome, man. I like to see people with Deshin ambitious or working on their goals to, you know, further their life and, and do something because something that I think is just absolutely not true at all. Absolutely not true. Is that just because you have Deshin that you can't do something with your life for the world. I, your life just ends there. It's like, no, you, you can make something out of your life. You get to go and do things, you know, you can, um, get a degree as you're doing or get a job somewhere or start a business or try and make an impact for the world. And, and there's no reason why we can't I actually think that since we have to shame that we can give more impact to the world in some ways, since we understand adversity and suffering more than the average person does because we live with it on a daily. Right. Yeah, exactly. Um, let's talk, let's talk about um, adversity and, and to shame. Um, so how old were you when you were, when you were diagnosed with the shin? So I was, uh, six years old. Um, my, my parents, well, actually, so when I was, um, younger, like, uh, I guess in preschool around that age, um, the teachers kind of noticed that I couldn't keep up with the other kids. So they had mentioned that to my parents. Well, you know, I went to go see a specialist and got a muscle biopsy, and that's where they found that I had Duchenne. Mm, okay, okay. And how has, you know, Duchenne made you feel? Like, you know, well, oh, okay, so how old were you when you lost your ability to walk? Well, actually, I'm still, I'm still ambulatory, but it's getting uh, harder. Oh, okay. Okay. Um, when did you notice that it started to get noticeably harder? Probably about last year, I started noticing it was harder to get up from a seated position. It was just, I was using a lot of energy to uh, pull myself up. Um, so I've, I've noticed since then um, that it's been getting harder. Mm. How about your arm strength? How's that been? It's been, it's pretty much been like at a good level. Um, I mean, some days it seems like I, it's harder than others, but um, for the most part, you know, I feel pretty good about my arm strength. That's good to hear. That's good to hear. Um, how, how does the, the struggle of, you know, it's getting harder to walk or um, to move around. How, how does that make you feel? I guess some days it gets me a little down because it's like, you know, it's, it's kind of like, um, I don't, not like a, anything bad, but I think it's just kind of like makes you down like, oh, well, I can't do what I used to do like a few years ago. Um, it kind of, it kind of does that, but for the most part, I don't, I don't really let it bother me. Um, I kind of accept it as a reality it's, it's like well it's gonna happen and you know it's not much I can do about it you know but to keep living my life mm -hmm. I think that's an interesting philosophy and I think that's um, really the philosophy of acceptance which I think is, uh, is an important way to deal with it um, how does destroy to share in the organization how, how does that make you feel it makes me feel good, um, you know, um, that you're out there, you know, making a difference and trying to um, get where we can uh, have we cure cure this thing and get rid of it. You know, um, you know, it makes me hopeful for the future. Hmm. Yeah, I'm glad I'm glad you say that, and me as well. You know, that's really it. You know, trying to build the future, trying to usher in the cure, trying to get the job done. Um, and move on from this thing, uh, move on from this disease for, um, you know, the human perspective, the human as a whole. Um, I think that we need to just get rid of diseases altogether. So yeah, I, I'm glad that you say that. Um, a, a very interesting question that I always ask people with Duchenne is, 
you know, what would you be doing right now? And I, we kind of touched on this earlier, but what would you be doing right now if you didn't have Deshin? I think I think um, I would be doing uh, be in the medical field, um, doing surgeries. You know, um, just anything normal. And you know, looking back, like um, like I'm not in in school anymore, like high school. But you know, if I didn't have Deshin, I probably would have played some sport, you know, or something like that, you know, um, I think would have been, I would have done something like that. Um, mm -hmm. You know, I always think about, you know, that question, like, what would you do if you didn't have Duchenne, you know, and that's, you know, a lot of things like kind of go well, I can, I could have uh, rode a bike or, you know, join like the football team or, you know, stuff like that, you know. Is that the sport that you would have played football if you didn't have Deshaun? Probably, yeah. Football, yeah, okay. It's cool, cool, cool. I'm a, are you a football fan? A little bit. I mean, I watch it now and then, but not as much as I. Uh, I don't watch it a lot. So. Mm. Yeah, I, I, I'm a, I'm a big football guy too. Big football, um, big basketball guy. Um. Those are my two favorite sports. I, I, I'm, a, I'm a big sports guy, so I like I like sports. Um, but yeah, I think that's true. I think sports is definitely one of the things that missing out on sports, I should say, is definitely the one of the worst parts about the shin because sports is one of the great things about life, I think. So um, that kind of sucks. But I think we can still, you know, appreciate the game and still like watching it and still be a part of it um, in, in different ways. Um. When it comes to, this is a very deep and serious question. When it comes to the early death rates of Deshin, how does that make you feel? What are your thoughts on that? To me, you know, sometimes it's like, I don't, I don't think it's like 100% accurate because it's like, you know, they, they give, you know, some doctors give a sentence. They're like, oh, well, you're only going to live to like, 25 and then you have people living to like their 30s you know longer now so it's like to me it's like I don't really know because it's like one doctor says another thing and then it's like you come in and it's like past you're past 25 and they're like don't understand it's like I don't really think that they're fair to be honest because it's like I'm not not everybody's the same you know um yeah, I think it's a generalization. I don't think that everyone is different. You know, some could be earlier, some could be later. It definitely seems later is happening, but, you know, 25 is, is I guess, the average age. Um, so it sounds like you kind of don't worry about it too much then. No, I don't. And that's good. I think that's really good. I actually don't worry about it at all either. I, I really don't. Um, I don't know. It's just not something that I worry about. I um have a lot of thoughts on that, but I'll, I'll leave it at that. Um, where do you see yourself in the next few years then? You know, do you see yourself counseling people, as you said? Um, what, what, do you, what do you see yourself doing? Uh, well, I, I see myself like counseling people, probably like um, people inside the church, you know, um, people attending uh, maybe employees of, of the church, you know, just mm. anything I think in that, in that area um, is something that I'm passionate about. Um, just kind of helping people um, with, the, with different, with different issues. Mm. Awesome, man. Awesome. What do you hate most about Deshin? Probably uh, the weakness, just the progressive weakness and having to ask, you know, kind of accepting that you have to ask for help for everything. And it's not like you can do everything on your own. You always have to ask somebody. Um, I think is the frustrating thing for me. It's just relying on somebody 24 seven. So that dependency. Yeah. Mm. That's understandable. I agree. I, I hate losing freedom. Um, so I see what you're saying. 
Do you think, though, that Deshane has made you a better person in terms of your character? I think so. Um, I would say I, I would, it's made me um, probably stronger. Um, it gives me a reason, I guess, to keep uh, living. living. Um, it's just knowing that I have it and to live my life as much as I can, you know. Yeah, well, how has it, you know, changed your view of adversity and overcoming it? Like, do you think like some people sometimes, like, let's just be honest. Do you think that some people sometimes complain about things that aren't real problems? Yes, yes, I do. It's it's kind of like in the back of my mind when I hear somebody like complaining about some problem that's not that big. It's like, well, try having a a disease where your muscles are wasting away, you know, and it's. I've had a few people where they like complain about some ailment or something hurting. It's like, well, you can't compare that or they try to compare themselves. So <laughs> I've heard that too. I, um, it's pretty embarrassing on their part. I think to be honest with you, it's like, wow, dude, you are complaining about that, you know? Okay. Um, Something that I noticed since I started this podcast is that Deshin makes people become a natural problem solver. Do you think that Deshin has made you a natural problem solver? And the way the reason I say this is because everything we do, really, we're in 24-7 problem solving mode. How do I move over here? How do I adapt to this now? How do I do you think that is true for you too? Yeah, I think it has. Um, like a lot of things. I guess like if my mom's trying to help me or something, I'm already thinking we can do it this way, you know, and then I'll tell her, look, we, we can try it this way. And it usually works, you know? So it's like, I really do think that's attributed uh, from the Duchenne. Mm. Yeah, I, I agree. I think it definitely makes people a problem solver. Um, so something I want to do now is give you the platform to say whatever you want to say or ask me any questions you have this is the last remaining part of the podcast so do you have anything that you want to talk about bring up or or ask it's all yours so i wanted to ask you so how far have you got like with trying to get um a cure uh well what do you what do you mean by that like getting um something out there um like kind of a promoting stuff uh well in terms of research we we helped last uh late last year we helped um a study that they did um so that was good and you know that's relating to stuff like CRISPR and you know uh, gene therapy technologies um but for the most part we've mainly focused on first building up awareness and building a following, building that, you know, um, audience and getting an interest in this disease, because I believe that, you know, if we get a huge interest in this disease, then we're going to raise a lot of money very quickly. And then we can just flood scientists with tons of money to do the research and hopefully usher in this cure faster and, and get it done. Um, that's really my, my goal. My, my goal is not to, to fund band-aids. And what I mean by that is, you know, treatments that aren't a full cure we want a full cure we want to complete the cure and so uh, that's what we're working on i think that this year later this year we're going to see some really big stuff from destroyed shin and i'm really excited about that so does that answer your question yes it does it does yep uh anything else that you'd like to bring up ask talk about so you know um I guess I guess I kind of wanted to know how how did you start out like events event wise like what did you do to try to launch it at first like to get the followers? Um, I mean, really, I my main focus and really it's the same thing today is social media, really social media, and then you know you want to get involved with locals around your community, you know. Um, a lot of local businesses and stuff like that and, and local platforms, if you will. Um, and that's really how you get a local following going and um, just posting good quality content 
a lot of it and stuff like that. And I'm really taking the time to learn branding and marketing and really studying this stuff. And, and you can build a following and, um, and really get, get things going. Okay. The reason I ask is because, um, I also have a nonprofit, um, mm -hmm. which is, uh, fighting, um, muscular dystrophy with Christ. Um, and I've kind of, you know, I have it out there, but it's just, I haven't really figured out what to do or kind of how to promote it. Um, so. Hmm. Yeah, yeah, definitely. We can, um, we can definitely, uh, uh, I can definitely help you with that, talk about that and, and everything. Um, do you know, uh, or do you have anything else that you want to bring up and then um, we can end the podcast and uh, go on from there? No, I think, I think that was, that was it. That's it. Okay. Um, well, the way we end the podcast is we say the official slogan of destroy to shin, which is complete the cure. So on a three, two, one, we're both going to say complete the cure. Are you ready? Yes. All right. Three, two, one, complete, complete the cure. The cure. All right. Thank you, everybody, so much for listening to another episode of the Destroyed Shin podcast. Um, please check out destroyedashin.org. Uh, that's D-U-C-H-E-N-N-E, to spell the shin, destroyedashin.org. You can donate there. You can follow us on social media at Destroyed Shin. Please tell other people about us. Go ahead and listen to other podcasts that we have. Um, you can really hear the stories of people with the shin. Um, so please go ahead and check that out. Thank you so much for listening.